So our um, speaker this morning, um, he's been here in Cebu for uh, six months already, uh, six years already, and um, one year since he joined us. And um, I think we, uh, some of us heard already his testimony, how he came to know the Lord Jesus Christ through his wife. And we have a privilege to um, hear him uh, speak, uh, bring his word, uh, God's word to us this morning. And um, without uh, further ado, I'll um, request Brother John to be here. This is our Machan, our Aya. Machan means friends, Aya means big brother. Uh, let us pray. Thank you, Jesus, for bringing me here tonight, uh, this morning. And Holy Spirit, guide my thoughts, my words, that those who hear it may spread it throughout the world. Amen. My dear friends, I was a Catholic. I was born a Catholic. I went to a seminary for a short time. I want to be a preacher, a redemptorist preacher. And finally, I found the truth that Catholicism was not the thing for me. And therefore, I stopped practicing. I was an altar boy. I said the Mass in Latin. I still know, I remember the Mass in Latin. For some of you may not even know that the Mass was said in Latin. So. Anyway, long story short, I met my wife of 26 years now, and uh, I fell in love with her. And uh, my secretary, Edna Salise, another Filipino, told me that if I want to court her, I have to be a Christian. That was the choice. Yet I was not willing to do that. But having asked us many times, she said, if you want to see me, come to Bible study on Friday nights. And so I went, not to see Jesus Christ, or to know Him, but to know her. And through Bible study and reading the Bible, I became the devil's advocate. I wanted to find fault with all the teachings that are in the Holy Bible. So therefore, I asked her, can I buy a Bible? And she was so excited. So we met and she gave me the first KJV, King James Version. And I studied the Bible and I was not studying it to know Jesus. I wanted to find every possible fault that those who were teaching the gospel, I wanted to show them that they were wrong. God works in miracles. I began to see the truth in his word. And on the 28th of December, 1992, I was baptized. And being a Christian is not easy. I thought many people asked me, what happened? Did you see any lights? Did you see anything? I said, no, I was very wet and very cold. And my life started there. And uh, lots of you who are born again Christians, some of you have not been born again, it is time to hear the word of God, it is the only word. And uh, it's not an easy part to be a Christian. And that's what I'm going to testify today in my message. To be a Christian, it's easy to put your hand up and say, oh, I'm a Christian. But to live like one, now that's different. Let me just give you a short story. I hated people to the point that when I was a Catholic, I hated people that I wanted to kill them. That's how much hate and anger that was inside of me. Having been born a Christian, I love those same people. I pray for them and I love them. Because God told me that if I want to follow him, I must love my enemies, do good to those who hate me, 
and to love them with all my heart, just as I love anybody else. I've got to love these people. They're very important. So being a Christian, don't say, oh, I'm a Christian. I can tell you it's not easy, especially when you're young. So much temptations around you. So this is my message to you this morning. I wrote this message in 1996, I think. I do messages and I publish it on the internet. I send it to many friends, both Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist. They never complain. I always expect some of them to say, don't send the message. In fact, yesterday, every morning I send a greetings to all my friends that are on my Facebook. And a young man whom I've known for a long time who's a Muslim, Adam, he said to me, did you know I'm a Muslim? I said, yes, I do. But he never said, don't send me the message. Okay, so anyway, this is my message. Very often we say the spirit is willing, but the body is weak. Have we not heard this in the good book? How often have we let our good intentions govern our lives and do not do anything to improve our inner selves spiritually and physically? I must confess that I am guilty of this but what intrigues me most is that each time I return to this state of inner peace with God, it seems and feels to have changed me for the better. Or should I say, it has made my faith grow even greater in Jesus Christ. So for many of us here, sometimes we feel we're not going anywhere. Uh, I've been there. I'm 71 years old. I became a Christian in 1992, so you can work backwards. And uh, it's not easy. You tend to drift away sometimes. You um, think, now you've got a good job and you're doing well. You don't need Jesus Christ. But what I have learned from the Bible that when the Father chooses you, you don't choose yourself to be a Christian. This is my belief. The Father chooses you, gives you grace to be born again. And what the Father giveth the Son, no man shall take. So once you are saved, you are saved forever. And Jesus Christ gives you the opportunities of, to do the right thing. But when we tend to go the wrong way, Jesus always taps us on the shoulder like a father and says, hey, and sometimes he does give you tribulations because that's the time we most often turn to him. I teach my children every day at Bible study. I said, the first person you turn to is not daddy, mommy, your friends. When you have a problem, no matter what it is, you turn to Jesus Christ first and then the others okay so my faith grows even greater in Jesus Christ for in the good book of Luke 1910 it is written for the son of man is come to seek and save that which was lost then he inspires me on as he says in Revelations 22 16 I have sent mine angels to testify unto these things in the churches I am the root and descendant of David the bright and morning star I read the Bible every morning as I wake up at a half past five that without doing that my day is not started I, I appeal to all of you you need to read your Bible every day don't make excuses you don't have time. I tell my kids, you can't. You have time for Facebook. You have time to chat on your phone. 
But if you can't find fifteen minutes to read your Bible, you're not a Christian, believe me. You have not given your life to God. When I was born again, I began to read that Bible like it was something that if I didn't do it, I'd probably die. Like if you didn't eat, you would die. That Bible became so important to me. And even today, this Bible is, is a thing I turn to for every, everything. If something is going wrong, I turn to Jesus Christ. If I want to do something, I turn to the Bible. I look for Him for everything. That's what's being a Christian. Right? So please, young people, you need to read your Bible and be convicted in your faith. I just coming in the car, I told my daughter, never compromise your principles in Jesus Christ. I'd rather die for it. Okay. I just put it here on December 28, December 1992. A new life began for me. One that has blessed me, enriched me, and challenged me in ways, in many ways, giving me trials and tribulations. It has been a great struggle, a path that leads me on and on, falling and rising, searching and finding all that He wants me to be. Being humble, gentle, kind, forgiving, generous, sorry for my misgivings, pure in thought, word and deed, to be just merciful, a messenger of peace. That, today, we've been, all this month has been a mission. That is what our mission is, the mission of peace and love. We need to love one another, not just your wife, or your boyfriend, or your girlfriend, or your mother, or your father. You need to love everyone. It's very important. Without love, this world is nothing. Jesus is love. So please, remember that. As you go out, Smile at somebody, a stranger. I talk to my, sometimes my children, you were talking to everybody. I said, well, I try to start a conversation because I end up talking about God. I don't restrict, restrain that to just Catholic, I, Muslim, Hindu, Buddhist. I share the gospel to them, I tell them. I tell Muslims, in the, in the Quran, I have read the Quran, I have read the, the, the Buddhist books because I wanted to know in the Quran in 30, 36 times it mentions Jesus Christ did you know that? in the Quran it mentions Jesus Christ 36 times and the Virgin Mary oh sorry 25 times and the Virgin Mary 36 times in the Quran and in the Quran it says that Jesus Christ is the only one a giver of life so I tell Buddhists, uh, to Hindu, uh, Muslims, it's in the Quran. Your Quran says that Jesus Christ is the giver of life. He took a ball of clay, he spat in it, he mixed it, and blew on it, and a dove flew out. It's in the Quran, it's not my words. So you see, you need to tell people, and when you're going to tell people, and you're going to challenge them, you need to know the other side. You need to know the Quran, you need to know what the Buddhists believe in and the Hindus believe in. And coming from Sri Lanka, it's a very mixed community. So we've got Hindus, Muslims, Brahmins, um, you name it, Catholics, Christians, Baptists. But we always share one another's faith and I wanted to always know what they're why they do this. I've been in the, in the mosque with my Muslim friends and they said to me, they put the little, what they, we used to call a thumbi cap, a little round cap on my head and my friend said, when I bow, you bow. <laughs> and when I went to church, sometimes they would say in the Catholic church, can we come to the mass? And I said, you're welcome, you can come. So they would go to the mass. We never 
differentiated anything. We had no anger or hatred or animosity amongst one another. But today, in this world, there's so much anger, hatred, animosity to one another. Especially when it comes... I, I, I don't call Christian, Christians a religion. We are not a religion. We are a faith. So never say, oh my religion. You are not, we don't have a religion, we have a faith. Because by grace, we were saved. Right? We are not a religion, we are a faith. Every other religion, every other religion, we are not sure whether they are going to meet God. So let's start from the Catholics. They are not sure that when they die, they are going to go to heaven. Are you sure that when you die as a Christian, you are going to go to heaven? I am 100% sure. I am 100% sure that the moment I die, I will be in heaven with God. The Muslims, the Hindus, the Brahmins, the Buddhists, they don't know. They are not sure. All the good works they have done, all the money they have paid, they are not sure whether God, their God, their God, is going to accept that. That's why in the Catholic religion, they have to have a requiem mass. With the hope, God will hear that mass for 5,000 pesos or 20,000 pesos. And you get a dough in. And I tell a lot of Catholics, my, my brother and sister are Catholics. They don't talk to me because I'm a Christian. I tell them, when you die, you're going to go to hell. So don't mince my words. <laughs> That's it. You have to be born again to go to heaven. Let's be very straight about it. Unless you're born again, you have no way into heaven. So if you have friends who are not born again, and some of you who are not born again here, if you die right now, you don't go to heaven. You go straight to hell. There's no thing called purgatory in the Bible. He wants you and me to be happy and rejoicing in, and being joyful in the body and spirit. This is what he wants all of us and all others to be. He left us his word of how we can all live as one family in Jesus Christ. In the book of Matthew 7.12, Therefore all things whatsoever you would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law of the prophets. Very important to understand the Bible. This is the law of the prophets. And his word, his word is law. Right? When he gave the Ten Commandments, he didn't say, uh, you know, you, you, can re you can do it or you can't. He, that, that, it's a commandment. It's not a request. It's not a request. It's a commandment. You have to follow it. That is the law. You need to follow that very carefully. So being born again is all this and more. So to be born again, one must give your life to Jesus Christ, body and soul. Okay. I used to preach in Malaysia. I used to go across the border uh, from Johor Bahru because it was a sort of a secret church where there was about maybe 30, 40 people who attended service and every third Sunday we would cross the border so it didn't become too suspicious that we crossed to preach the gospel. So we used to go and take it in turns from the Southeast Asia Bible Baptist Church in Singapore whom incidentally our pastor is a Muslim convert from Dabao, Pastor Amaral Gomo. Right, and uh, one of the most wonderful men that I've met and uh, 
when I attended the church with my wife, they used to preach in Tagalog. And I used to sleep for about three hours. And my wife told him one day, Pastor, John is always sleeping and snoring. He said, okay, Marissa, we will start an English service. <laughs> So they started an English service at 9 a.m. just for me. And that now it's packed with people who come for the English service and then followed by the Tagalog service. So you see, God works in mysterious ways of bringing you closer to Him. I have experienced so many trials in my life. And I told my children, they are witness to it, I said, had I not been a Christian, I do not know where I would be today. I do not know where I would be today. Because it's the only the faith in Jesus Christ that sustains me. You know, that I know, I tell my kids, don't worry, He will provide. Have you experienced a problem in your home or your family or somebody and then you think, ah, oh, God is not listening to me. Believe me, He's listening. He hears every cry, every tear, every sad thought. He knows. You just need to open your heart to Him. And I recommend a great book, I can't remember the author, called Waiting. It's a great book to read. And I always refer to that book as one of those people. God was calling me for 44 years and I was not listening. God is always calling us to Him. But sometimes we are not tuned in. We need to listen. And when we listen, meeting my wife was God's way of saying, Hey, here's an opportunity. And I didn't become a Christian just to marry her, let me get that straight. <laughs> I became a Christian because I wanted to be a Christian. I wanted to know God. And I still don't know Him enough. Believe me, none of us know God. Some of us say, oh, we know God. Honestly, tell yourself, do you know God? We don't know Him. We need to find out more about Him. He's infinite, He's beautiful, He's wonderful. He's uh, a person that hears you. He's heard my cries. And sometimes I say, are you listening to me, God? It's been five years. It's been five years and you're not... Why, are you deaf? I, I, I speak to God like that. I say, are you deaf? I'm talking to you, I'm asking you, and you're not listening to me. And then I remember what the Bible says, in his time. In his time, not mine. And then when it does happen, you, I just go down and thank God from the depths of my heart for hearing my prayer. So please, those of you who are not born again here to this morning, don't wait for tomorrow, for tomorrow may never come. It's too late. Turn to God, look for Him in every possible way. Um, and then when you give your life, don't think you're on an easy roll. Then it's tough. Being a Catholic was easy. You go to the confessional, and every Friday my father insisted we all go to confession. Sometimes I didn't have any sins. I was at nine or ten years old, so I should think of something. Okay, I think he liked these ones, so I would tell him. Well, I didn't commit them, but I would make them up because I, ten years old, what sins do I have? You know, I said, oh, I took my friend's marbles. I didn't do it, so I, but. The, the priest is very happy. I had about four or five sins. He says, I forgive you. Three Hail Marys, two glory be to the fathers. And I absolve you. Nominus Patris, it's Philitus Santos. Amen. And I would go. And my father said, oh, he's been, he's happy. And I said, 
I should say, I'd never told my father that I was making up sins to be forgiven. To be forgiven. And nobody, I even challenged many priests to come and talk with me on national television here in Philippines, even your bishop. I said, come and challenge me. And my argument to all Catholics is very simple. I even asked the nuns in Indiana, how many commandments do you have? Ten, Sir John. I said, it's very good. Says, Are you sure, sister? He says, yes, yes, ten commandments. I said, that's very good. But I said, in my Bible, it also has ten commandments. Well, she said, yeah, you should have ten commandments. So I told her, did you know that uh, Pope Paul XII had a vision and God appeared to him and told him, remove the second commandment. So, I said, if, he, if God told me that, John, remove the second commandment, I would have nine. Correct? You take ten minus one, you have nine. But, they changed the tenth commandment into two. Thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's wife, and thou shalt not commit thy neighbor's goods. And now they have ten commandments. The second commandment has been removed completely. Now, don't forget, this happened. When the Bible, Catholics never read a Bible. I never read a Bible. I had a missile in Latin. Who understands Latin? I learned Latin in school. So, nobody knew, people didn't know that the, there was change. And why did you, do you know what the second commandment is? And why it was removed? And this is my argument to people when I talk to them about Jesus Christ. It's very simple. Without the second commandment, you cannot have statues, you cannot have uh, holy pictures, you cannot do all these things, you cannot worship, kiss them, do this and do that. It's a business. Very simple, to removing the second commandment, you have given opportunity for big business. Sell a statue, people in my old, my, my home, in my mother's home, we had a picture of Jesus Christ and a, ca uh, a, a thing burning all day and night in oil a week. You know, we said the rosary every night. We would all kneel down and say the rosary. And I broke every record in history in saying the ten Hail Marys, the glory be to the Father and the Father. I said it so fast because I wanted to get out of it. And I didn't know anything. I didn't know anything about the God I was worshipping. I was an altar boy. I rang the bell, answered the Mass in Latin. You know, even today I challenge Catholics that I know. I ask them questions and they are clueless. Not all of them. Some of them are bright. They're reading the Bible and they can actually answer questions. Old and New Testament. Okay. So, it's a mission time for all of us here in, in the Philippines. We need to spread the gospel. I'm very bad in memorizing verses in my mind. But I do remember everything that is written in the Bible. But if you are not that kind of person who can talk to people, the best Bible that people can ever see or read is you. You are the walking Bible. The way you act, the way you speak, what you do, you are a reflection of that one true living God. All right? Remember that. You are the reflection of the way one true living God. So, I have written here and I used to put my email address here are a few of the many questions I have asked myself. Where did I come from? Why am I here? Where am I going? Who is my neighbor? My brother? And I found the answers. 
Yes, I have the answers before me and if I used to say on the internet, if you want to know them, write to me. And some people have written and asked me. Jesus has a mission and this mission on this planet is incomplete. He is gathering his flock and those that are lost, there is still so much work to do. He found me. It is then I realized. And he has left me and all those who are born again a legacy. His legacy and this legacy is the scriptures written by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, the Bible. So you must open your Bible to read and understand the meaning of the scriptures. The legacy he has left us all. You will soon find this is no simple legacy. He has given us everything, our heart's desire, when we are in Jesus Christ. He gave us, you and me, words of assurance. He fulfilled his Father's will. He left messages of love, light and forgiveness. He left me his power of faith. He gives you and me the knowledge and understanding of his kingdom in heaven. He left you and me the call, the rules, and the test of discipleship. He also left you with and me with words of warning. Now may the words of Matthew 11, 28, 30 give us all encouragement and strength that they have given me. Come unto me all that are that labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me for I am meek and lowly at heart and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. I ask you today, are you really happy with your life right now? Can you tell yourself, I am happy with my life. I am happy with my life. I can truly say that, that I'm really happy with my life. I wouldn't give it for anything else. Reach out for him and let him enrich your life with his love. So reach out to him. He will never let you go. God bless us all. Amen. Amen. Let us now hear the choir.